and welcome back to Hope for All. We are so glad that you could join us here at the Salvation Army for worship today. You might know us as a thrift store or a social service organization, but we are also a community of ordinary people whose lives have been radically changed by God. We gather weekly at various locations throughout Western Pennsylvania to worship and to proclaim the good news of God to the world. I'm Lieutenant Kelly Melfi. And I'm Lieutenant Tyler Melfi. And together we are pastors for the Salvation Army in North Boroughs, which is located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Well, we made it to 2021. Congratulations. Congratulations, Tyler. <laughs> we certainly have. Although it's been a challenging year, we've also seen so many blessings. It's true. And we... We all, I think, have been through crazy times, through our own storms, weathered different trials and tribulations. It hasn't been easy. These last 12 months, many curveballs have been thrown at us. But I do know one thing for certain, that Jesus is at the center of each one of those storms for all of us. And that's the hope that we have an opportunity to hold on to. We do. And on today's show, we will be focusing on exactly that. In God's Word, in Mark 4, we get to read about one of Jesus' many miracles, when he calmed a literal storm. I'm really excited to hear about that. Before we dig into the word a little bit deeper, let's get lost in some worship music together. Enjoy. Great things have done great. 
sound of his voice And seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken for my regard Through it all, through it all My eyes are on you Through it all, and through it all It is well said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat, so it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Today the message is being brought to us by Lieutenant Kevlin Haynes, who is a pastor at our Steel Valley Salvation Army Corps, along with her husband, Lieutenant Michael Haynes. You may have heard the story when Jesus calms the storm, 
or this may be your first time. That doesn't matter. What matters is that I do know that something in this message is going to touch you today. Please enjoy and listen and open your hearts as Lieutenant Kevlin brings the word. The storms of life are inevitable. They occur when we least expect. They bring disruption and create chaos. They also expose the character of our being and evoke us to look beyond ourselves. I believe we witnessed and persevered through many storms in the year of 2020. The residue of those storms is yet to come. At a time such as this, I tend to look around to see if I can find someone to help me. I am reminded to lift, lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Today, we have the privilege to explore Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41, when Jesus calms the storm. This passage highlights the humanity and the deity of Jesus. In the beginning of chapter 4, we are informed that Jesus was teaching large crowds of people in parables, which are short stories used to explain spiritual truths. Jesus and his disciples were busy ministering to the people throughout that day. So when the evening approached, Jesus said to, his, to the disciples, let us go over to the other side. So the disciples took Jesus along and embarked across the sea, along with the other boats who accompanied him. As they were crossing the sea, a furious squall, a windstorm suddenly came about. The sea was surrounded by high mountains and narrow valleys that functioned as wind tunnels. On this particular day, the wind swept the waters with such a great intensity, creating a violent and wild storm. The waves began to spill over into the boat, and they kept coming and kept coming until the boat became immersed with water. While the disciples were experiencing the chaos that was caused by the storm of the sea, Jesus, in his full humanity, was found sound asleep. He was resting after a long, busy day of teaching under the scorching sun. So he took the liberty to sink into a deep sleep, a peaceful sleep that was not disturbed by the raging sea. In verse 38, we will notice that the cries of his disciples grabbed his attention and awakened him. As the storm progressed, the disciples' anxiety progressed, and they panicked. Their lives were surely in imminent danger for them to rush desperately into the quiet space of Jesus and cry out, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Do you not care if we perish? I could imagine that they were thinking, we are in a life and death situation and you are in here sleeping? It's important for us to recognize that up until this point, the disciples have witnessed Jesus care for other people in miraculous ways. They witnessed Jesus heal a woman who was sick in her bed with a fever. He then healed a man of leprosy. A little while later, they witnessed Jesus heal the paralytic who was carried to him on a mat by four men. The disciples seen and heard the wonders of Jesus to those around them. The question they are asking in this passage is, will he show up for me? Does he really care about me? Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Their reliance on Jesus just became extremely personal and intimate. There is a difference between having the knowledge of Jesus and experiencing the power of Jesus in your own life. The disciples didn't see the true power of Jesus until they called on him concerning their own crisis. 
They only had the knowledge of Jesus until they experienced his faithfulness in their personal storm. The disciples' response to their storm is noteworthy. They didn't turn toward their skills as fishermen. They didn't put any emphasis on one another. They looked to the only one who was able to save them. They ran to the Savior of the world, asking him to save them personally. In verse 39, we see Jesus do one of the many things that he does best. He hears the prayers of his people. He doesn't just hear, he responds. He acts on behalf of his people. In his full deity, he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the raging waters, quiet, be still. In other words, Jesus muzzled the sea as one muzzles a dog. At his command, the wind hushed and the sea became perfectly calm. As we continue to explore this passage, we will begin to understand that Jesus goes beyond their immediate request. He goes beyond the physical elements and express the spiritual danger. If we take a closer look, we can take notice of how the outer chaos of the raging sea shifted into an inner crisis which caused fear and disbelief. In verse 40, Jesus said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Fear and faith fights for the same space. In other words, why are you afraid of death when your help comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus is faithful and true. The disciples recognized that their reliance in Jesus would take them much further than the fear that they entertained. For even the wind and waves obeyed the command of this man from Galilee. The storms of life will come. They will cause disruption and chaos. It's inevitable. In this life, you and I will have troubles, but we are not called to face them alone. Today, I encourage you to turn to Jesus, to cry out to him knowing that he hears you. He will wipe every tear from your eyes. He is the God that sees you and he will come and rescue you because he cares about the affairs of your life. My prayer in Jesus' name is that we may turn to the Lord when our troubled hearts are like the raging sea, that we may hear his voice and feel his presence as he muzzle the storms within us with a simple command, be still. My prayer in Jesus' name is that the one who calms the sea uses that same power to put our hearts and minds at ease. In closing, Psalm 86, 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your precious name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I just love that we have this opportunity to just sit and reflect and take some time out, um, disengage for a moment from the busyness of the world and just sit in these moments, these precious moments that we have. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And please, wherever you are in your faith journey, if you would like to talk to someone, we want to encourage you to reach out to us. The Salvation Army is open and welcoming to all. So if you're looking for a church, we would absolutely love to have you be part of our Salvation Army family.
We have worship gatherings on Sundays, both online and in person, at many locations all across the Pittsburgh area. To find your closest Salvation Army, please visit this website. Here you will find information about the various services the Salvation Army offers, as well as opportunities for you to partner with us in bringing hope to your community. We also have a Facebook page to keep you up to date with what is happening in the Salvation Army in Western Pennsylvania. And if you want more information specifically about this show as well as our other music and arts program, please follow us on Instagram. As we wrap up today, I just want to take a moment and pray with you. Lord, we just thank you. Jesus, you calm all the storms in our lives, Lord. Whether the storm is internal or whether we're dealing with a real life situation, all things are beyond our control, but all things are within the realm of your control, Lord. We just thank you for that, God. Continue to bless us all on this entire world. Lord, you've created us all, and I know that you're looking after us all, that we have the hope that can only be found in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. See you next time. See ya.
My hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name